Basil of Baker Street by Eve Titus. Chapter 14. The Twins at Last. We climbed the ladder to the loft. Hawkins halted before a narrow door. He fitted a long key into the padlock and the door swung open, revealing a large room. In the middle of the floor lay a box of half-nibbled chocolates. Beside it, covered with dirt and grime, and with their pinafores all tattered and torn, lay Angela and Agatha, fast asleep. They were such a welcome sight that I even enjoyed listening to their delicate snoring. My silent prayer had been answered. The twins were safe and unharmed. We shook them gently, and they awoke, staring sleepily about. Basil and I rubbed some of our makeup off, and they recognised us. Shouting with delight, they leapt upon us and smeared our cheeks with wet, sticky kisses. After a while, Basil waved them away. Little mouselings, your parents will soon shower you with affection. As for myself, I'd sooner tackle a tabby cat than put up with all this kissing. The twins giggled and hugged Hawkins instead. Basil looked at them sternly. All this trouble and worry could have been avoided if you children hadn't gone off with a stranger. Angela hung her head. We'll never do it again. And Agatha added solemnly, Cross our hearts. Outside the black of night had given way to the pink dawn. Tired but happy, we made our way back to the Grey Mouse Inn. There I got out my little black bag and gave the twins a complete check-up. I was glad to find that they were in perfect health. Hawkins offered to bathe them. I'm quite used to it, sirs, with I told my own. Meanwhile, Basil and I changed into our regular clothes. It was good to be our own selves again. When the shops opened, we sent Hawkins out to buy new pinafores for the twins. Freshly scrubbed and shiny clean, they were two of the prettiest little white mice in all England. Basil attracted many stares in the lobby. Now that he was no longer in disguise, everyone recognised the Sherlock Holmes of the mouse world. After breakfast, Hawkins guided us to Workington Station. A train was about to leave for London, and we slipped into an empty compartment. Basil leaned out. Hawkins! We Baker Street mice plan a school annex and other buildings. We should be happy to hire a fine carpenter like yourself and to provide lodgings for your family in Homestead. If you should serve a prison term, the job will wait. The train began moving slowly out of the station. Harry Hawkins ran alongside, waving and calling, Bless you, Basil! Uh, bless all of you! Chapter 15. Back to Baker Street. The twins enjoyed watching the trees and houses flash by and glued their noses to the window all the way to London. At Euston Station, we overheard a lady directing her driver to Baker Street. We helped Angela and Agatha up and all four of us perched on the rear of the handsome cab. What a heartwarming scene took place when we reached the cellar of Baker Street, number 221B. As Basil remarked later, watching the reunion of mother and children was ample reward for all the dangers we had faced. The twins scampered on ahead, calling, Mummy! Papa! We're home! We're home! There was a look of heavenly joy on Mrs Proudfoot's face, as she clasped Angela and Agatha in her arms. My darlings, my very own darlings! Mr Proudfoot wiped away his happy tears, and my own eyes were far from dry. 
Many friends and neighbours crowded around to congratulate Basil. When we returned to our rooms, Mrs Judson bustled in with cheese souffle, Basil's favourite dish. She beamed proudly at him. Sir, you are the world's greatest detective. Uh, the second greatest, Mrs Judson, Mr Sherlock Holmes, of course, ranks first. Afterwards, we settled in comfortable chairs before the fire. I looked searchingly at Basil. He had been working at a mad pace and seemed unusually tired. As your doctor, I prescribe a full week's rest. Basil slouched down in his chair and yawned. Sounds fearfully dull, Dawson. It was a wild, windy night with a blizzard raging. Suddenly, our doorbell clanged. Basil sat bolt upright, no longer bored. Our mousekeeper rapped on the door. A caller for you, Basil, says it's a matter of life or death. He turned to me pleadingly. My dear doctor, can't this week's rest wait? Only a most exciting case would bring a mouse out on a night like this. I shrugged my shoulders. I suppose you'd grumble and groan for days if I denied you. Get on with it. The famous sleuth faced the door, his weariness magically gone, his eyes agleam with eagerness. Uh, Mrs. Judson, I am ready to receive my caller. <laughs> For listening to Grandad Orc. You can hear more stories by going to the Grandad Orc channel, and if you want to hear stories read back to back, then have a look in the playlists. If you subscribe to the channel, then you'll know when a new one is ready. The books are available in most high street stores, libraries, and there are links to some online sellers in the description below if you don't have a copy. So, until next time, bye for now. <laughs>